right, ladies and gentlemen, I am going to do a, uh, I'm going to extend my talk just a little bit on uh, Rules for Radicals, Saul Alinsky, and the My Christian Commentary on that. It says, uh, see the good, if you can make it up. It's green tea today. It's good stuff. So, um, I know a lot of Christians don't like Alinsky, and I don't blame them. Um, Saul Alinsky was not a good person in the sense of what he taught. He was an ends justify the means kind of guy, and that tends to fly in the face of Christianity. Uh, I've got a graphic I'm going to try to throw up uh, here sometime uh, and show you what it looks like to see Alinsky's work in practice. Uh, and it may or may not be controversial depending on your ideology, but it's um, a wonderful demonstration of what Alinsky's methods actually, uh, when, you, when you see them in the real world. And this is why I say that Christians cannot always use his methods or cannot use all of his methods, because sometimes there's, there's some bad things in here. Uh, and then there's a quote that I wanna um, I wanna place up here also, and I'm gonna try to read it without um, without butchering it too bad. But he says, as an organizer, I start from where the world is, as it is, and not as I would like it to be. That we accept the world is as it is, and not in any sense does not in any sense weaken our desire to change it and to what we believe it should be. It says, It is necessary to begin where the world is as if we were going to change it into what we think it should be. That means working within the system. So I'm, I'm sure I butchered that just a little bit. Um, hopefully the quote will help. I'll help you see if I've messed up at all. Um, but this is one of the most profound statements uh, for any any leader to understand is that you have to begin with where the world is and not where you want the world to be. It's probably the greatest problem I have noticed with Christian leaders is that typically we tend to be idealistic. So we tend to start off where we assume the world is without actually having a touchstone for knowing where it is. Uh, we often see things in black and white, right or wrong, with no gray. Uh, while it is useful to paint the world as black and white without gray when you're trying to call people into some sort of motivation, um, call them to action, as a leader to see the world like that is very, very problematic because many things are amoral. Um, they're not. They're neither good nor bad. They're they're just things. And it's what you do with those things that determine the goodness or the, the badness of a thing. Um, the second part of, of what is important in that quote was he talks about working within the system. So as Christians, we generally rail against the system. Uh, instead of practicing, like I always call it judo, um, so, a lot, for example, the left has radicalized and weaponized the judiciary system in the United States. They will sue over absolutely everything um, because they know that their ideas are not popular enough to win popular support to pass through the legislature or even winning on referendums. They just they can't do it. So they do it to ju the judiciary. Christians have often resisted that because we think it's mean. A lot of times we're just, we're scared to do that because, you know, for a church, um, for Christians to have um, enough oomph to actually go and legally sue and things like that, it's usually going to take a church or a church organization, and there's not a lot of those who are willing to be engaged in that public battle because of a, a church, the modern church is first and foremost a public relations machine. You know, whether you agree with it or not, that's it's what it's become. And so um, 
we tend to not work within the system anymore. We just tend to rail at the judiciary, thinking that we are going to be safe inside our bubbles uh, that the Constitution has corrected uh, or has erected for us. Now, while I would love to believe this, I think it is absolutely naive to do that. And in order for Christians to make a change in the world, we have to begin to engage in the system. More than just, you know, existing, more than just uh, praying about it. You have to put feet to your prayers. Uh, You have to get out there and you have to do something with it. You have to show me your faith by your works. You know, if you believe the court system is going to rule godly, then you need to have lots and lots of prayer meetings at the Capitol, at the courthouse. You know, if you believe and you think God can change a senator's mind, then you need to gather up ten or 15,000 of your closest friends and you need to go have peaceful protests um, at that senator's house and pray for them and have them come out and pray for them. You know, we're going to pray that you make the right decision and uh, get out there and do it. You know, you have to work within the system the way it was created. A lot of times as Christians, we, we think the system is failing us. And it's not that the system is failing us. It's that we are failing to engage the system properly. You know, I find it crazy that that uh, Christians are not more active in doing things in this country. And I understand we are an apocalyptic religion. We believe the return of Christ. This world's going to end anyway. I have often wondered whether or not we are going to be held accountable for not being more involved in politics today, simply because we live in a republic. We do not live in a monarchy. Uh, We elect our leaders. Therefore, realistically put, we are the leaders. And so uh, it's going to be interesting. Um, You know, there's a theory out there, and I don't know how accurate it is, and and I wouldn't put much stock in it, but it talks about like king priests in, in Revelations that might end up uh, actually talking about a republic, but that's just a kind of a kooky theory, meaning that, you know, we, we rule and, and that sort of thing. Um, anyway, that's, that's after the coming of Christ and all that kind of stuff. But, um, going back to leading today, we have to work within the system and there are ways to work within any system where you can make things happen. And so as leaders, we have to figure out how to do that. Uh, we have to figure out how to work within the system could, to get the desired results. You can always rail against the system. You can hate on the system. You can do a whole lot of things. But until you have the ability to work within the system and win, and Christians should have that be ability, because we have access to the Holy Ghost, something that non-Christians do not have. We have a direct line to God. We should be able to be the best in every single field that we decide to, to engage in. So... Um, get out there and engage uh, within the system. View the world. Understand the world how it is. Not how you want it to be, not how you think it is. What is there? What is? Ask that question first. What is? And once you determine what is, from there you can begin to work in the system. Sorry about that. To create real and lasting change.